extensive introduction, but I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, hello, everyone. So as Shaknik mentioned, my name is Limasan and Aonok, a third year student from history department. Um, I am from Kohima, Nagaland. So yes, firstly, before I begin, I would like to mention that I feel extremely privileged and very honored that I have been given an opportunity like such as this to, you know, showcase a little bit of my culture and represent a little bit from where I'm from. And even though this is, you know, um, restricted to one festival, I, we can learn so much through this. So I believe that this will be a time of learning for all of us as well. I would also like to thank um, Niru Ma'am, who insisted that I carry out with this uh, presentation. So yes, uh, thank you. So I'll start with my presentation now. Mm. So Hornbill Festival. What exactly is the Hornbill Festival? I will just give us a short generalized um, meaning to what Hornbill Festival is. So the Hornbill Festival is an annual grand celebration that vividly showcases the rich culture and tradition of various Naga tribes. It is held every year from the 1st to 10th December at the Kisama Heritage Village, Nagaland, and is also known as the Festival of Festivals. Uh, so the interesting fact about Nagas is that we are known to be people of festivals. Uh, we have a festival for almost everything. We have a festival for Thanksgiving, a festival for harvest, a festival that celebrates monsoon, and a festival that celebrates you know, life in general. So each Naga have their own festivals and different traditions that they follow and pass down from generations to generations on end. Um, there are currently 16 recognized tribes in Nagaland with several minor tribes. And all these tribes of Nagaland, um, we have our own separate identity, we have our so separate individuality, and we come, we have our separate own separate um, history as well. We do not come from one place, but then we usually, we come from different, different places. For instance, uh, take for example, the Sumi tribe of Nagaland, S-U-M-I, Sumi tribe. They have seashells embedded in their traditional wear. So this, you know, this traces back to their origin. This traces their origin back to places of sea, which is not uh, the common feature for other Naga tribes. So yes, apart from varying history, uh, we also have different cultures and traditions. Um, we Nagas form a community of a very diverse group of people now become one. The festival was actually conceptualized uh, to showcase Naga culture, traditional and contemporary in the spirit of unity and diversity. So when did the Hornbill Festival start? Um, it started on the 1st of December 2000. Uh, it actually, we celebrate Hornbill Festival parallel to our statehood day, which is the 1st of December. Nagaland received its statehood in the year 1963. Um, so last year, the 2021, the Hornbill Festival, we celebrated the 37th statehood day. So yes. Um, comparatively, Hornbill Festival is a very new tradition started. It is a baby festival, which uh, we hope will carry on for generations to come. And that brings us to our next point as to why Hornbill was initiated. So apart from being a popular tourist attraction and harboring crowds from all over the world, Hornbill was also initiated as Nagas. Naga people can preserve their culture within the community, even with um, the rapid urbanization taking place all around us, taking place everywhere around us, even here. So although only happening once a year, the Hornbill Festival brings out the true essence of belonging and pride for us Nagas, as we also learn and enjoy with um, the, uh, as the locals, we, locals we enjoy with uh, tourists from all around the world that come to celebrate the festival along with us. Uh, so yes, a very distinct feature of the Hornbill Festival would be the Morong. The Morong is, generally putting it, the Morong is a key institution of the Nagas. This is, the Morong is a hut-like dormitory or kitchen, which is traditionally the center of social life, especially for unmarried males, where in ancient times, the unmarried males would go and settle down in these morongs where they can, you know, they learn about life, they learn about hunting, they learn about the various aspects where men usually do these things. Yes, 
Um, so at Naga Heritage Village, each tribe, Naga tribe has their own has its own morang where visitors come to experience and partake in. <laughs> so there are sixteen very nice tribes. So there will be sixteen morangs in the Kisama Heritage Village. And just fun fact, um, the the uh, the morangs are located geographically according to the Nagaland map. So yes, when you look at it from an aerial view. It forms a Nagaland map, the Morongs. So when people come to the Morong, when tourists and locals come to the Morong, they partake in food, traditional food, which is um, which is uh, unique to that uh, unique to that tribe only. So they come, they you know, locals can come and choose any Morong they want to visit, and when they do, they eat food that is traditional to that tribe itself. So yes, they can click photos with the traditional attire and tools, etc., etc. Uh, so yeah, the cultural performances. We come cultural performances in the Naga Hornbu Festival is a very important part of the festival. Each tribe has an item lined up for the spectators and uh, tourists to view. Each either being uh, traditional Naga dances or songs and other skits and place skits or place anything under the wide array of naga culture it's displayed for our spectators so i have some videos lined up so this is the traditional naga log drum beating so here we see a group of ao men which is my tribe i am from ao they beat the drum according to a certain rhythm where like people in the village would know that it means this way so every certain beat has a certain meaning so i'll just play the video for us So this has been uh, the uh, traditional log drum and this current this specific beating it means it's a type of celebration to announce celebration so in ancient times in the villages where people would you know communicate this is how they would communicate this is a sign like if another village was attacking them this is how they would warn people through this specific beat is of course a different beat but yeah people have the beats memorized and every time they place it, they would know that there is a village attacking or there is trouble or it's time to celebrate. So, yes. This is a traditional palm song uh, from the palm tribe. So, people from this tribe, they're singing their merrymaking. This is their song of merrymaking. So this has been uh, the traditional palm song in for merrymaking. People they gather around when there is good news or when there is you know something to be congratulated about. They gather around in circles this way, in this manner, in the villages, and they sing this song. Okay, so Hornbill Festival is a place where local entrepreneurs, as well as uh, entrepreneurs from outside the northeast, they come and they set up stalls where they sell their ethnic local goods. So stores ranging from horticulture, horticulture sorry, to ethnic wear, locals as well as tourists can come and buy whatever it is they want. In the first picture, we have a picture of uh, the Naga traditional drink, which is called Zuto. It is a fermented rice beer, which um, is drunk on every occasion in the villages. The second picture is a picture from a local artist. It is a picture of all the shawls, the Naga shawls, coming together in unity. And I, if I remember correctly, this particular piece was sold for eighty thousand. Um, the the man carving, it might look like a just like 
the bamboo stalk, but it is actually a mug. So like the man carves designs and you know intricate designs into this mug, and we use this mug for drinking uh, zuto, like I mentioned before. And the last picture is a picture of the bamboo pavilion where people they come and you know they partake in the stalls. They come and buy things from them. This is where people set up their stalls. So the next few slides, I think it's it's uh, slides of videos which I want to you know show. I don't have much to explain in this video because it's very visual oriented, and you know I won't be able to do justice to explaining what music and what um, different activities happen during the Hornbill Festival. So in the first video we have. So basically, this these videos are usually tradi both traditional and contemporary intertwined. Uh, I'll please watch the videos. You'll have a better understanding of what I mean. <laughs> So these are traditional based plus ethnic, you know, they they come and perform on stage. So these are usually done by the youth. And Hornbill also, it has rock festivals harboring and rock bands from all around India. They come from Shillong, they come from Bombay, they come from Delhi. So these are just a few of them. <laughs> So yes, this has been the performances, both cultural and as well as, you know, um, contemporary intertwined together. So we have performance like this on a daily basis from the 1st to 10th of December. So every night, people can go and partake in, you know, the following programs. All right. So yes, another interesting aspect of the Hornbill Festival is that it is not only limited to um, the grounds of the Kisama Heritage Village, but also it's a much wider celebration that spreads throughout um, Nagaland as a state. So there are sister festivals that happen um, in different parts of Kohima, as well as the other districts of Nagaland. Um, here we have the International Naga Film Fest Nagaland Film Festival, uh, where non-commercial films from across the globe um, are screened and apart and apart from the screening of these movies, there are also masterclass workshops on different topics included in the wide umbrella of filmmaking. Last year, we were fortunate to have extremely talented artists um, among us, such as Hiru Keswani, uh, Vikramjit Roy, Meenakshi Shid, to come and conduct workshops under the ages of the film festival. So apart from this, apart from the film festival, we also have events like the Naga Wrestling Contest or the International Loin Loom Festival, um, traditional, the traditional stone pulling ceremony and the World War II Peace Rally. So yes, these are some, these are just a few of uh, the events that take place during uh, Hornbill Festival. There are other uh, festivals like the International Literary, Literary uh, Festival that all, it all comes under the ages of the Hornbill Festival. 
So yes, if um, you're into adventure and if you would, you know, if you don't mind a little bit of checking, then this would be perfect for you. The festival also organizes walks and treks around um, uh, treks where the spectators can physically be involved in the program itself. We have walks across Kohima, city tours, and tours across the villages. And I'm sure all of you have heard about the famous Zuku Valley and its beauty. So the, uh, the picture we have, uh, these are all shot by me. So this is uh, the Zuku Valley, the first picture. The second picture is the Tupema, Tupema model village. And the third is Konoma, which is Asia's first green village. And the last is the city of uh, the Kohima city, where they have walks. And of course, um, the next slide would be a video of Zuku Valley. Of course, it would not do justice to the beauty it holds when you physically go and experience Zuku Valley itself. But it's a small figment, rep representational figment of what you might experience if you do, if you did indeed actually um, check Zuku. So yes, that has that is the magnificent Zuku Valley. So now we come um, to a part of recent controversy, which I'm sure all of you have heard about regarding the recent massacre of the Fortin civilians by the armed forces in the Nagaland and why the Hornbill Festival was cut short of its days. Um, so as usual, the Hornbill Festival was scheduled to end on the 10th of December. However, on the 4th of December, 21 midnight, 14 Naga civilians who were innocent were brutally murdered by the Indian security forces while they were returning home from a coal mine at Oting village in Mon district. This a particular news uh, sent shockwaves throughout the state and the Naga community around the world. With a strong solidarity based on past experiences, it became immoral and un unethical to continue the celebrations while our people were mourning. Thus, the government of Nagaland rightly decided to call off the remaining days. Um, this is a very sensitive topic to all Nagas and, you know, it's still a very fresh wound. It's still not healed. The after effect, the meth is still, can still be seen around Nagaland and in the state capital as well. So what I want to say, what I mean to say when I say past experiences is that this has not been the only time the, or the only incident where the armed forces under AFSPA has done something heinous of this kind and gotten and in fact have gotten away with it. Nagaland has a long history of freedom fighting and nationalist movement. Primarily while the law was first in place enacted. There is a list of incidents that had happened in different places in Nagaland as well as different places in the Northeast itself and also Kashmir. Um, and that's why we uh, received such a widespread solidarity among the people who with a shared um, history caused by the AFSPA. So I'm sure what I'm sure everybody knows what the AFSPA is. It was imposed in Nagaland in the 11th of September 1958. And by taking peace and order, it means attacking according to what the law means. It means like attacking innocent civilians or, you know, uh, arresting them without a warrant just on the basis of suspicion or a mistaken identity. And that is what exactly happened in Oting last year. Um, these 14 um, coal workers were returning home after working long and hard and suddenly were attacked and murdered by the armed forces on the basis of mistaken identity. And what was presumptuously credible information to them when asked later, why did you murder them? Why, like what, what was the initiative? They mentioned that it was credible information that they received and that led to the killing of these 14 civilians. It is baffling um, that within the world's largest democracy, we have laws like 
Pass ba? Still intact and still in full use. It is um, the most one of the most controversial controversial aspects of the long history of conflict in Nagaland. Trying to justify um, these measures by saying that they were needed to achieve stability and order in the state. However, it is recorded, it is a recorded fact that AFSPA has been criticized of using its power in the wrong manners in such a great manner. So uh, the, re uh, the AFSPA, the law, has also been reviewed by the UN. So attempts by the UN, Amnesty International and Human Rights uh, to challenge AFSPA have been met with weak responses from authorities and little desire or commitment to tackle the impunity. The two high-level official committees released reports in 2013 that were highly crucial of the way AFSPA facilitated sexual violence and extrajudicial executions. The reports of the Justice Verma Committee and the Justice Hedge Commission supported cells made to authorities by the UN and Indian bodies to address the abuses committed under AFSPA and end the effective impunity enjoyed by the security forces. The Justice Verma continues, committee continues to note that the use of AFSPA has also legitimized sexual violence against women. Hundreds of our women, hundreds of Naga women, they are brutally raped by the armed forces. And the men, they are brutally tortured by them. The kids are using, are taken into labor. Amnesty International India has produced a detailed report on AFSPA. It urged the government of India to repeal the Armed Forces Special Powers Acts of 1958 and 1990. And since 1990 in Jammu and Kashmir, the Amnesty report indicated AFSPA for grave human rights violations, including extrajudicial executions, enforced disappearances, rape, torture, and other ill treatments. Um, some of the incidents, the major incidents, the major atrocities that happened um, in the Northeast are mentioned below. In Oinam, Manipur, which was also named Operation uh, Bluebird in the year 1987, many, many, like their villages were burned down men were tortured till they died they had a casualty of around 27 people who died then in mokokchung as well in the year 1994 the whole village was set ablaze there was nothing left but rubbles and people had to start from that on in peck in 1960 people had more than six villagers from the poor village were tortured to death the list just goes on and on about the torturous acts and the heinous acts of AFSPA. In Kohima itself, in the year 1995, um, there was a tire burst and the armed forces, they shot dead around 26 civilians, out of which eight were killed and two were minors. And Ultimately, they got away with it because of the law, because of what AFSPA is and how it grants the right to shoot down a person. Sadly, during December 2021, the latest notification came from the Ministry of Home Affairs, which declared Nagaland as still as a disturbed area for another six months under AFSPA, terming the state as disturbed and dangerous. And this came amidst the very widespread, um, peaceful, uh, the peaceful movements that the people were doing for, and then for the removal of AFSPA in the state. So, if the government in the state center chooses not to look into this matter as a chain of historical, historical oppression, sorry, historical oppression and injustice 
is done against the Nagas and places where AFSPA is enforced, then it is their incompetence that will surely lead to further unease in the region. It is also worth taking into consideration the argument that says that there have been a time when the government, when the Indian government imposition of AFSPA may have been justified because of the nationalist movement and the rising national groups. However, it cannot be um, stressed enough or expressed enough to say that those times, those times are long gone. It does not exist anymore. Of course, there are national groups here, but we there has been a common agreement between the government and the national groups that there will be a ceasefire. And that ceasefire continues till this day. We do not have movements like that anymore. So after what happened in Oting, there were several instances where people, where the Naga people protested peacefully, seeking the revoking of the 1958 Act. There were several candlelight vigils throughout the state, throughout India and abroad as well. Nagas from different parts of the world, they joined hands in solidarity against the AFSPA. There were also walks that were conducted from Dimapur to Kohima, which is a length of about 75 kilometers, in protest against the AFSPA. These peaceful events of not returning violence with violence, in contrary to what the armed force has done to us Nagas, is something commendable. All these events brought together a sense of solidarity and oneness among the Naga people and also the people who have shared a similar history throughout their history. So this is um, this is the this was on the cover page of New York Times the recent Oting Oting incident that happened that took place. So I would like to end my presentation by quoting Charles Chasse a Kohima-based author and independent researcher who asks, what kind of justification would can be delivered to someone who has already been killed? The only thing that can now possibly be done to give meaning to their deaths is to make sure that no such incident ever happens again. This means to remove things that make it possible for such incidents to ever happen. This is the direction towards which we need to take for our battle of justice. Not just the Nagas, but anyone and everyone who believes in the value of human life and even to an extent, the national integrity of India. Would the government of India agree to make AFSPA and all legislation and apply it to the rest of India as well? It would obviously be a no. Then why is it then that the life of a person from the so-called disturbed state or disturbed area in Nagaland weighs any less than that of any person. If it truly, if it truly is national integration, then that the Indian Union desires, AFSPA would not have been the way forward, and it would never was. And that is how I would like to conclude my presentation. I thank you so much for giving me the time to express. That was a really insightful and a great presentation, Lima. It's really sad to like see AFSPA uh, existing in the largest democracy of the world, uh, which is like actually all fueled by just paranoia. It doesn't have anything real behind it right now uh, in 2022. So uh, do we have any questions? For Lima, uh, Shivendra has raised his hand. Uh, does Shivendra have a question? Uh, hello, Lima. Yeah. Hello. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to say that you have given a very wonderful presentation. Thank you. So, uh, my question is actually related with the Armed Forces Special Power Act 1958. Uh, mm -hmm. I just want to know that your personal opinion that right? what you feel that this Armed Forces Special Power Act of 1958 is good or bad for the community 
because i am saying like this because there is always a debate regarding the security concern of the country either we have to give the primacy to the civilians or the security purpose because we have china as our neighbor so just i want to know this so based on what you said being china as a neighbor we are one we are no geographically not even close to china we, as a naga person as a naga person who has uh, you know borders myanmar or china yeah as a naga person would uh, you mute yourself there's some disturbance yeah please mute yourself as a naga person who has had experience but had the history of something as evil as aspa i i am totally against aspa um we have a history that we condemn of course the naga i i in my um in my presentation i said that maybe it was justified then that they enforced aspa in nagaland or in the other states that adjoining nagaland however it does not make sense right now and i am against it i don't support it they kill people they on on the basis of mere suspicion or they arrest people without a warrant so that is why i'm against aspa and the majority almost a cut majority sorry all the naga people we strongly condemn aspa for what it is and the law for what it is i hope that answers your question Okay. Uh, I actually respect your opinion, but uh, I again have one question: that uh, if we repeal this AFSA Act, then what about uh, the armies which are being made in your northeastern state that we want a separate nation? Didn't you think that uh, this is against our unity and integrity of the nation as a preamble of our constitution? We don't want a separate nation anymore. It's not what we want anymore. That was long gone. That movement died out in the 1980s itself. That, that movement died right. out. So that is not what yeah. we are aiming towards right now. That was about 40 years ago, 30, 40 years ago. But there are still evidences of uh, such kinds of tendency. Uh, where exactly, might I ask? Bro. Oh. see uh like a separatist movement at least no longer exists in nagaland it it used to i'm talking in the case of the uh, whole northeastern state not only nagaland there is very less movements of such no. sort no there are there are no longer any uh, those kinds of major separatist movements that wanted to spread in the nagaland okay there may be mistake for me uh and i have a one more question that uh, uh, there is a uh, as you mentioned about hornbill festival yeah, uh, yeah. in assam also there is a festival related to the that is pakke paga hornbill festival also uh, mm -hmm. can you mention uh, that either there is a difference between both of them or both are, both are same uh, sorry my uh, where exactly i didn't quite get you yeah uh, i am talking about uh, is there any difference or similarity between the pakke paga hornbill festival which is celebrated in assam and the hornbill festival of nagaland no it's a different we don't celebrate it uh, the hornbill festival in nagaland is exclusively for nagaland as a state not for i think they would have celebrations within the same time but then we don't usually consider that as the hornbill festival for nagaland okay. thank you both basra ma'am has raised her hand ma'am if you want to ask a question you can go ahead Uh, Lima, uh, it's a wonderful presentation and I think almost scholarly exposition. Uh, the way you kind of uh, trace the entire historical context coming up to the present times. Uh, it's uh, you have rightly said that it is the kind of the state. Uh, I won't say state versus uh, people, state versus society, but state is people in relationship with state. So it is the people who must decide. what kind of state do they want yes. uh, on personal note we can tell you that in 19, uh, 2014 delhi university has taken ganyode to northeastern state hmm. including nagaland manipur and yes, we still yes. remember since i was part of the organizing team so we were told that 
uh, students were more than welcome the kind of huge reception they got but then you were also told beforehand that in in any case if we had secret service people with us or police then we would be in trouble and yes. and this a kind of and that was very endearing in fact people students uh, that was a time when students also made an attempt to learn languages of northeastern states and mm. of course uh, you can say the overwhelming welcome which was there in every state so that was a good reward for us so i'm sure as you say you have pointed so well that we have faith in states that should change and the voices of people must be respected but what happens and this is what you can say as a whatever letter we have read and uh, from our colleagues also what happens that you have treachery from within so it's very unfortunate that the army was given definite information that turned, that turned out to be false so when we start playing to politics and and don't care about people and those in power want to play dirty with their own people then things become very difficult very difficult yes. Yes, and there's yes. another trapping on when internationalization take, takes place that in distorted form here what we must say we have the intelligence among nagas and they're superbly brilliant so that kind of distortion doesn't happen from within but yes. an outside trapping sometimes leads to unjustified justification for the wrong deeds of the army yes so yes. very well done very beautiful presentation for all of us and since recording is being done so we may be utilizing it later on when we are going to have a history festival also so right. there may be some inter- we may attach it with some kind of question being asked on nagaland film festival All so right. wonderful yeah. we are thank really i'm me. very happy thank you so much ma'am lima lima i had a question uh, all right neeru ma'am uh, no i only wanted to say lima it was a yeah i i will i will ask you. yeah it was a brilliant presentation and i'm so so glad that you did it because i think none of us knew about this and what a beautiful glimpse into nagaland you know it's i'm sure everybody is already planning that at some stage in your wish list you have to go there and so now i this opportunity to tell you that now work on the other assignment that i told you and make a presentation <laughs> you we'll do, we'll do, we'll do. you've done a very good job and i'm sure uh, let chadnik ask his questions and if there right. is any other question and then we would end it up with you singing a song <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you <laughs> okay so my question was why is this festival named hornbill what That's is the right. significance behind this name? so basically the hornbill festival it, in naga culture it has been like a significance of good luck the hornbill signifies the bird it signifies good luck it signifies good fortune it signifies if in ancient times when we would see a hornbill we would say like my day is made or my year is made or my future is made so in that sense and in that manner we wanted the the prosperity of the um, the festival to carry on and to continue for generations on end and that is why we named it hornbill festival okay Yeah. So, uh, does anyone else have any questions? If not, then Basra ma'am has a question. Yeah, Basra ma'am, if you uh, have any question, no uh, question. I, in fact, that's okay, a kind of thing. Okay, since you like yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we will we'll come back to that. Uh, Lima, like, go ahead with your performance, the one that you performed in the Hornbill Festival last year. um since maybe all of us are meeting in a few weeks since that no, is no 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 right now right now maybe i will perform that because right now i'm no. not ready i am so sorry i am so no. like guys lima perform. just a snippet come on just a snippet <laughs> i can't actually sing it with um uh, without my choir so yeah it's okay you don't need a choir um, i promise that when i come back i will perform in front of everyone Okay, then any other song that you can that you can sing solo. Please, please, Lima. Ah, <laughs> uh, maybe not today. I prefer. I no, Lima. Please, please. Thank Thank you. you have such a sweet voice. Right. Sing something. <clears throat> um. All right. Let me There sing. You. There you go.
Um, so this is a song written by my father, which I will sing. <laughs> um, <clears throat> all right, here I go. Walking down the lonely lane, feeling low and down, wishing that you never had began. Memories of this lonely path will bring you down again, wishing that you never had began. What are words if you really don't mean them when you say them? What are words if you only forget times and they don't? When it's love, yeah, you sing in my love, those words, they never go away. They live on. Even when we're gone, what are the words? Thank you. That was great, Lima. And yes. like, will you be waiting for your uh, Hornbill Festival performance when college reopens? Don't forget about it. For sure, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Basra, ma'am, uh, if you would do, if you would like to address something. Um, nothing much to say. I think I'm really very happy to know that not only uh, one we can say that we can take pride in our college that uh, fortunately since its inception in 1987, we have provided equitable space to all our students from coming all parts of India. And fortunately students from Northwest Eastern states are really wonderfully very well. Dulete is there in our natal, there are many names, they want schools in Pondicherry teaching. And we feel that if we are doing something incorrect, you, they should be always, students should come forward to tell what is going wrong. Because ST Cell is there, Prof. Dr. Jeremiah is a very kind of conscientious, he's also from Nagaland. And he is kind of very vigilant, ensure that all students get connected. And what I feel that we part, it's a wonderful year for all of us to be part of One Nation. Delhi University gives you that experience. On, so one feels very happy and hopefully as at undergraduate level, it's a very scholarly exposition. So we always say that it's almost adding to what else is a knowledge formation. So we all are enriched by your exposition and more such presentation to come from all of us, all of our students. And hopefully we are all longing to see each other. So very soon call university is going to open. So many, many interesting things are going to be planned. So best of luck to everyone. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Neeru, ma'am, would you like to say anything? No, I must thank all of you for uh, joining. Thanks, Lima. I, I know I pestered him, but uh, I'm glad I did because I. Ami needs pestering. <laughs> Otherwise, this but, whole, this event would not have been. I know, but I think it was something so very interesting, you know. And we, are, I, all of us have learned something. And uh, Shagni, thank you for uh, hosting it so well. And thank now you, we are Shagmi. waiting to see meet each other, as Basra Ma'am has said. Let's plan and uh, the few months that the third years have in college, let's make them very, very memorable. And I'm sure this is going to be one event which will always stay in my mind. And I'm sure